We've been talking about different sources of funding for a bank and how historically banks relied almost entirely on deposits, but more recently they've come to tap funding from alternative sources such as securitizations, mortgage-backed securities, and other type of asset-backed securities. But also another source of funding is the repo market. Okay, this is a source of short-term funds, and it's funding not just for banks. Okay, there's a number of organizations that use the repo market, uh, mutual funds, hedge funds, even the U.S. Fed uses the repo market as part of its open market operations okay now the organizations that use the repo market they are selling securities with an agreement to repurchase them at a higher price so repo and repo uh, repo market stands for repurchase okay so you're selling securities you're agreeing to repurchase them in many cases you're agreeing to repurchase them the very next day okay so the repo side in the repo market is the side that is selling the securities. So the repo side, let's say a bank, is going to sell securities to another party. So the party that is buying those securities is called the reverse repo side. Now, when the repo side sells the securities to the reverse repo side, there is an agreement that the reverse repo side will sell those securities back to the repo side. Okay, so you're selling the securities, but you're going to buy them right back. Okay, so this isn't a permanent set. It's just ultimately what this is, is a secured borrowing. The repo side needs money. They need cash and they are doing a secured borrowing where the securities are serving as collateral for this borrowing. Okay, now the difference between the, the repurchase price and the selling price, okay, that's implicit interest. Now, the repo side is going to remain the owner of these securities. They're going to receive any dividends or coupon uh, payments that are related to these securities. So ultimately, I want to be really clear that this is really a borrowing arrangement. So the reverse repo side is lending funds to the repo side on a short-term basis. Okay, And as I said, the difference between the selling price, so the, the repo side sells the securities to the reverse repo side and then agrees to repurchase them, the difference, okay, in that between those two prices is the implicit interest, okay? The reverse repo side is not doing this as a favor, okay? So they're saying, yeah, we'll buy these securities and then we'll sell them right back to you. But when we sell them right back to you, that price is going to be higher than what we paid, okay? And that's the, that's the implicit interest. Now, an example of this would be, let's say that you had a bank and they had some treasury bills and they just needed some cash for the next the next day they need overnight and the next day they needed some cash and so they had treasury bills and they didn't want to unload the treasury bills so you just sell them on the repo market and you get to buy them right back and so then you just have funds for that that day or, or two days or whatever that you needed the funds okay so if the term of the arrangement is just for a single trading day, okay, that's called an overnight repo. Now, if it's going to be multiple trading days, three, four, five, whatever, uh, then it is going to be called a term repo. In an open repo, there is no set term. Okay, so this is just a little bit of terminology here for you. Now, in terms of characteristics of the market, repo market is usually highly liquid. Okay, so easy to find a counterparty and you know to be able to engage in these repo arrangements. Uh, sell the securities and, and have the repurchase agreement, and the cost of borrowing is usually low. So that difference between the repurchase price and, and the selling price uh, is usually not too large. So it's a popular way for banks and other entities to, to access short-term funding. Now, if the repo side, that's the one initially selling the securities and agreeing to buy them back, if the repo side, when it comes time to come up with the money to repurchase the securities, because think about it, they're, they're selling them, but they're agreeing to repurchase them. If when it comes time to repurchase purchase them, they're like, oh, we don't we don't have the money. We, we don't we don't have the funds. Then the reverse repo side, okay, the side that was basically lending, serving as a lender, they can take possession of the securities. Now, there's a risk there. OK, there's a risk that when you, if you're the reverse repo side, you're basically the lender on this side of the agreement. And so if when you get those securities back, there's a chance that the value of them might have declined. OK, overnight or whatever the time period was, there might have declined. So if those securities had a value of, let's say, I don't know, 5000 euros when you entered into the agreement, you're not going to lend 5,000 euros. You're going you're gonna to be willing to lend something less than that because you know that the value of those securities could decline. 
And if the your counterparty, the repo side, can't come up the money and you have to take possession of the securities, you don't want to be stuck with something where you basically you basically took a loss. So what happens is the reverse repo side, the lender in this, this agreement, they know there's a chance, well, hey, it's worth 5,000 euros at the beginning of our arrangement, but it might decline. So they're not going to lend out the full amount. Okay, so the in the difference between the the amount lent out, the cash lent out by the reverse repo side, and the actual value of the security uh, upon inception of this agreement is called a haircut. 